Scott's Miracle Grow, ticker symbol dollar SMG, might not be their household names of stock, but its brands are definitely household names. It's easily the biggest name in the lawn and garden products segment and is the market leader. Traditionally, the majority of the company's businesses can be roughly divided into three sections lawn care, garden, gardening, and pest control. The portfolio brands include Scott's and Miracle Grow, obviously, Earth Grow, and Ortho. It also marks the consumer variant of Bayer's Weed Killer Roundup, which is one of the most popular pesticides in, in the world. These brands have equal weight in both consumer and industrial applications, and the company has grew both by organic uh, revenue growth and by merger and acquisition to be where it is today, very much in the mould of other consumer products companies like Procter & Gamble, even though much bigger. This business isn't exactly setting the world to like growth-wise, uh, it's a solid company that most years grows reliably in the high single digits, low low middle digits, and pays a reliable growing dividend of about 1.65%. That is well covered at around 25% dividend payout ratio. This year so far, revenue growth is around 30%, so this may be an, an anomaly due to an increased time spent at home in 2020 and 2021. I don't need to tell anyone about that. And an increase in hobbyist gardening. Whether this remains is an, is an unknown, but I would say it's pretty unlikely that the core businesses of lawn care, gardening and pest control will continue to grow at this rate indefinitely. The company has, however, maintained its guidance of 19-20% to 20 sales growth for forward year 20, uh, for financial year 2021 in Q3. Now, this doesn't sound too exciting. What is exciting is the company's forages into the cannabis space. They sold through the Hawthorne business segment and they have a number of brands that have been, been by again, by company made or by acquisition. The company mainly sells hydroponics equipment, grow flights, and fertilizers into the cannabis industry. And while this is still a relatively small slice of the company's revenue, last quarter revenue revenue from cannabis cultivation products was up 48% compared to 29, 30 for the, the core business. Management is guiding for revenue from cannabis related products to be 45% higher than in 2020. I can see this trend continuing over the long term as the secular tailwind moves along with cannabis legislation. I think the market is seriously undervaluing the growth potential of this big business segment. Hydroponics equipment and all the others is ne completely necessary for the expansion of the cannabis industry in the US and Scott's Milk Club is really well put, well placed for this. And of course, eventually this, this trend could continue worldwide if liberal le legislation continues. Scott's Miracle Grow is a great way to play this long-term growth trend without having to invest directly in cannabis companies. A diversified company like Scott's Miracle Grow is inherently less risky than a pure play cannabis company due to its multiple business segments it can fall back on, the, like the core business, um, should the cannabis play not work out entirely. But obviously we'll still get a slice of the cannabis pie. The company has had a strong run up in 2020 from around $78 to, to, to 244 um, that's seriously impressive for this type of this type of like consumer goods measures. The stock's pulled back about forty percent to around one hundred and fifty dollars today, one hundred and fifty, one hundred and sixty, depending on the day. Uh, at these prices, it has a forward PE of about seventeen, compared to the S and P of the PE of the S and P, which is in the thirties right now. Looking at fair value calculations on Simply Wall Street, the company is extremely undervalued, around third four thirty eight percent below fair value. Wall Street analysts clearly agree with this with the 12-month price tar targets are ab mostly above $250. One concern is the company's relatively large debt load at $2.2 billion on a market cap of about $8 billion. Serving this debt will weigh on cash flow. This could, of course, limit investments in new markets, but I'm confident that the management can navigate this safely. The CEO, Jim Hajdon, has held a top job since 2001 and helped orchestrate the merger between Scott's and Miracle Grow in 1995, so he clearly has long, long. He's, he's in this for the long game. Under his leadership, uh, revenue has almost doubled since 2017, which again is highly unusual for this type of business. Ultimately, I think the current valuation of around 17 times forward earnings is a good price to call business. When you include the hydroponics business and a, a business riding a strong tailwind and growing at 45%, the valuation is starting to look extremely cheap. Looking forward, the things to watch are the revenue growth numbers for hydroponics and the cannabis legislation changes in general. While again, it's a relatively small part of the business, about one one billion in turnover. Um, 
this is definitely something people should be looking at as it, it has the potential to be the main growth engine for the company if if the cannabis industry plays out like a lot of people think it will. Uh, secondly, most concern is the, the debt levels and how this company um, grow continues to grow. It's a very acquisitive company and that could easily spiral to worrying numbers as so often happens in, in business. Fortunately, I'm pretty confident in this company. Like, It tends to keep a fair amount of cash on the balance sheet, but this is definitely something to watch. And the acquisitions tend to be in the, the low 100 millions, maybe even sometimes even less. It's definitely a, com- a company that will continue to buy at these prices, as I think now is the most attractive valuation it's had in a while. And I'm completely comfortable holding a business like this for more for the long term, 10 years plus.